Hello there. Um, I'm here with Simon Hall, the author of Mortem at Glorium, and he's going to take us through some of the basics of getting started in the hobby and to show um, his set here and what you get in it, how you play it, and everything we need to know to get started. So, Simon, thank you for being here. Pleasure. And I'm just going to do a, a sort of a, a brief unboxing, although I've looked inside already. But can you take us through what is in this box? What does this a person sure. start off with? So this is the uh, this is the compendium edition by PSC, and fundamentally you've got two things in the in the box. You've got what you would always expect to have with a game system. You've got the rule book, so we've got this nice heavy duty 240 page hardback rule book, which has got everything you need to know to be able to play. And we've got some QRS sheets. There are a few for different sizes of games because you can play this game in three sizes, which we'll come to in another video. You can play a small game called Pacto, uh, a medium game called Magna, or the big game called Maximus. So there are some sheets that we'll go through in other videos that explain how you play. But the other half of what's in this box set is unique to Mortem Glory. It's called the Triple C system. It's a, it's a system I invented for War Games rules. It, it works in sets of rules more than just the ancient set. But what you've got in here is a few bits of interesting gadgetry. So the first thing you'll find is you've got some card printed, printed sections here that you can knock out. One of them has got these on, which are all coloured discs. And the system that we use is a colour-driven system. So if I just flick a few of these out, I won't do too many of them, you can see they're in five different colours. Again, we'll explain how that works in, in other videos, but they're essentially used to manage all of the movement and the actions in the game. These ones have been done very cleverly in this set because they're double-sided. They're the colours for the system on one side, but they are deliberately plintered with extracts from the actual board. The place here. So one of our objectives with this is we want our games to look as beautiful as possible. So while you're playing the game, you won't see these bright colours. You will actually see these on the table and they'll disappear. Yes, mm -hmm. very nice. And we'll show some close-ups on the video so that you guys can see. This is a, this is a pack of cards. This has a the same purpose. So it gives you two choices of how to play. So. What you'll find, if I just rip that open, you've got some very nice cards. The same principle, they're designed to sort of disappear mm. on the tabletop. So even if you're playing with the cards, you can keep the game looking really, really lovely. Um, if you're playing the smaller game, the Pacto game, sometimes people tend to do that. It's quite a neat way of, mm. of actually mm. having the cards as well. Okay. Some people we find prefer cards, do the colour version, some prefer discs. So we've given both in the set. My personal view is that when you're a beginner, you'll find these easier because you've more permanently got a view in front of you of what, of what tiles you've got, what mm. colours you've got. As you get more experienced, you'll find yourself wanting to switch to these because you'll be better at remembering because you've got used to it, mm. what's sitting there. And of course, you if you've got a very on. large game, I suppose that is a lot less obtrusive. Yeah, exactly. Well, if you're playing, a, particularly if you're playing a, the small game as well, these are very unobtrusive. If you get a large game with a table and you're having to put them on the playing surface, yes, of yes. course these, these take up almost no space. So yeah. on a big game, a 6x4 game, the normal Maximus game, these vanish. I mean, yeah. you, really, you really don't see them at all. And you'll take table. us through the colours and what they mean a we will, later? But just to give you a quick flick through, there are, there are five. So always in this system, you get f there are five colours, and in order of weakness to strength, the black is always the worst, the white, white is the next best, the yellow is next to the top, and the red is the best. The bloody red is always the best. And, the, and you'll find the same thing with the next thing you've got in the box set, which is a, a set of special dice. And these special dice are, are not a gimmick. I mean, a lot of custom dice that I've bought over the years are just a D6 with fancy images on. Mm. This is actually a system. It's a system we'll talk about in, a, in another video, but it's specifically designed as a system with dual purpose dice. But you get 10 of these and you have the same basic principles in terms of these and these do the damage, these do the movement and these do the damage, basically. Okay. Very, very simplistically. And again, the black is the worst one to roll and the red is the very best. Okay. So that's your game kit. 
And then we have one little extra for that, which is we have a nice bag, Triple Z Games bag. So when you're playing, you're going to draw these chips out of the bag. So there are 50 of them. They're going to go in there. When you're playing your turn, you're going to say, I need to pick three out for this general. And you will have and a that look. will be your initiative system, which you'll take. Us essentially, that will be the initiative okay. system. How you manage your army. Okay. And this, what is? This is this is this is just a, a set of markers to use in the game. There are two things that happen during the game that need um, temporary markers. Mm -hmm. um, you have half base damage, which okay. we which we nickname a wound just for simplicity. So if we have some troops and they've suffered a wound. There's a little marker you can use for those. Okay. Yeah, that's ready made, and again, that blends into the table top that shows they've got what we call a hanging wound. Mm -hmm. And these ones are because bow fire and missile fire slow troops down in the game. I see. So these little ones that have got arrows on them, um, that tells you that that unit has been slowed down by firing when you come to move it. So you have two okay. types. And again, they're all designed to blend in. You can, you can of course, create your own versions of some of these at home. If you wanted to, you could you could you could actually create your own tiles. Um, people do that, and actually some people and I, I do myself. I have to admit, if I go behind here, I also have some that I did before. Some people like to do things like this to replace the wound markers, so you use actual oh, figures. Yes. So there's all sorts of ways you can do it. There, you can vary it, but this gives you everything ready-made, mm. sits in the box. Mm. But the nice thing to me that we've managed to do is we make it blend into the tabletop. So when you see the games played properly mm. with this, especially the big games, all this stuff is likely invisible. And what you really see is the figures and the game and the beauty. And then in the book, at the back, I noticed something. Maybe you can explain why you did this. That there are these. Ah, right, so yes. Well, yes, at the back of the book, we thought... Getting playing in this game is, uh, has got a few entry barriers. We've lowered them by making it need less figures, and we have box sets of the figures ready-made as well for armies. But actually, some people just want to be able to try the game, or Let's try it in travelling. So what we've done is we've printed you a ready-made army for the small game, for a Roman, for a Gallic, and for a Parthian. These are all pieces of artwork that are just the right size. Mm. So actually, if you want to, you photocopy that, or cut it out of the book if you really want to be a little <laughs> more extreme. It won't matter really because you've got the you've got the armies on the other side. Stick that on some nice heavy duty card. And you can give cut it, around give it, it a try. You've got an army without even buying figures. Without even buying figures, so you can you can try playing this game with three armies. So you've got mm. several different variants of games you can play. You can have the army ready to play in under half an hour from buying and the books. I presume that would be a good idea before you start choosing your army to see how it works and what works for you and what yeah, doesn't work for you. Yeah, no, that, that, that's a very good point. And also these armies are very different, deliberately very different. So we've got a, a late Republican Roman army, which is a very agile, drill, drilled army with mainly foot strength and, uh, and, uh, and um, professional generals, which is something we'll come through later. And then we've got the Lowland Gallic, which is kind of the opposite. It's a lot of troops. It doesn't manoeuvre very well, but it's tough in a frontal charge. It's got more cavalry. And then you've got a Parthian, which you won't see a foot figure in at all. This is an entirely mounted army, okay. which has got lots of horse archers and heavy cataphracts. So they're very different armies as well. So if you try these out, if you want to try them out as, a, as somebody who's never played it and doesn't have any figures, you will get a feel for what sort of army you like by the time you've played these against each other. Mm, with minimal commitment. With <laughs> almost zero. All you need is a, yeah, a good heavy duty piece of card and a... And a sharp knife. That's okay. all you really need to add to it to play the game. So you can play. I actually use that as my travel set. Oh, right. okay. I have a magnetised version of it at the board. That's an idea. So I can even play sitting in the back of a coach, mm. sticking those on magnetically and actually playing the game magnetically. So it creates a lovely travel set. The small version, the Pacto version, you can really fit into a small travel bag. Yeah, yeah. No, easily because it's. Uh, um, it, it, we mainly play with bases. And they're the same size, for those you've played before, the same size as the ones that were created for DBA, uh, Phil and Sue Barker's DBA system. They're 40 mil wide, yes. 20 deep, typically 60 for the bigger figures, etc. So we mainly use those. And the smaller game is somewhere between 20 and 30 bases. Okay. And that, that's all. Um, in fact, I can show you uh, a picture of my Sassanid army in the three different sizes quickly. Um, in this video, I'm sure Andrew will be able to slot it in if I give him the photos. And you'll see the Pacto-sized Sassanid army 
the, uh, the middle size sassanome yes. is the biggest size sassanome, yeah. which are indeed in, in the book and it gives you a quick feel for what yeah. you need. Um, in the video that we're going to do about designing your army, I think we can go through that in quite a lot of detail. Yeah, so. yeah it should be good. Okay, uh, thank you for taking me through the box and let's see what next you've got for us. Perfect.